A triacylglycerol is a fancy word for what we would refer to as a fat or an oil in our everyday language. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the structure of triacylglycerols, and I'm also going to talk a little bit about the difference between fats and oils from a scientific perspective. Triacylglycerols are huge molecules, and they are made from four separate molecules. So four molecules come together to make the triacylglycerol. One of the molecules that's used to make the triacylglycerol is this three carbon chain. Every carbon atom in the chain has an OH group. This molecule is an alcohol because it has those OH groups on it. And this molecule is referred to as glycerol. Its name is glycerol. The glycerol molecule reacts with three fatty acids. The fatty acid, remember, is a carboxylic acid. So there's the carboxylic acid functional group with a really long carbon chain. Instead of writing out the carbon chain, I'm just going to use this letter R to abbreviate super long carbon chain. And like I said, one glycerol molecule comes together with three of these fatty acid molecules. Kind of, you might notice the way I'm lining them up. There is one fatty acid for every carbon of the glycerol molecule. I'm just lining them right up here. When these molecules come together and react, and let me label this, we've got three fatty acids here, long chain carboxylic acids. So when these molecules come together, the hydrogen atom of the glycerol that's attached to the oxygen atom, so this guy right here, and the OH group that's attached to the carboxylic acid, they like merge together to make a water molecule, three water molecules, one for each. And as these portions of the molecules fall off, so as this portion of the molecule falls off to make water, the glycerol and the fatty acids become attached to each other. And it's gonna look like this. So we're gonna have those three carbons of the glycerol. They're still gonna have their oxygen attached like that. Hydrogen atoms still attached. Instead of having the hydrogen on the end of the oxygen, it now has the carbon and the double bond oxygen of the fatty acid. So we get this structure right here. And this, what we're drawing right here, is the triacyl glycerol. And then plus we've also made three molecules of water from every one of those combinations that we made. Now that's a really, that's a lot of structure to draw. So we do have an abbreviation for a triacyl glycerol. A lot of times you will see it abbreviated um, with just a rectangle that's used to indicate the glycerol. We call this a backbone. And then three other rectangles in the other direction, so perpendicular, that are used to indicate the three fatty acid tails on the molecule. And sometimes we'll actually label these like this is a fatty acid, this is a, or what used to be a fatty acid, it's not anymore. And this is the glycerol molecule. I don't think I have room to fit that in. So you might see an abbreviation that kind of looks like this, that is just being used to kind of show in a block diagram the structure of a triacyl glycerol. This particular triacyl glycerol that I'm representing right here is called a simple triacyl glycerol. I'm going to abbreviate triacyl glycerol, T-A-G. A simple triacyl glycerol is one that has three identical fatty acid chains or tails, three identical fatty acids. And uh, I'm indicating that this is a simple triacylglycerol because I've used the letter R for all of these um, carbon chains out here, which implies that it's the same. But not all fatty acids are, uh, are not all triacylglycerols are gonna have identical fatty acids. In fact, most of them do not have the same fatty acid. So if I just kind of change this by saying, let's make that R prime. So now we know that it's different from regular R. Let's make this one double prime, so it's different from the others. This type of fatty acid we would call a, or this type of triacyl glycerol we would call mixed. A mixed triacyl glycerol is one that comes from two or more types of fatty acids. Could be two, could be three. 
Um, the last thing that I want to talk about in this video is just the difference between fats and oils. And this is, it's not um, a very like scientific definition. What is a fat versus what is an oil? Because you're going to see that there are exceptions to uh, the definitions of fats and oils. Fats typically, so this is typically, fats are typically saturated. Saturated meaning that there are no carbon-carbon double bonds. But we do have some examples of fats that have a small number of carbon-carbon double bonds. They are typically solids at room temperature. So we're thinking about like uh, animal fats, like butter and things like that. And that's the other characteristic. They are typically um, from animal sources like butter, um, or shortening or milk or things like that. But there are exceptions to this rule. An oil is typically a polyunsaturated, meaning that it has a lot of double bonds. Polyunsaturated, meaning that in that carbon chain, so when we're talking about saturated versus unsaturated, we're talking about what's going on out here in the fatty acid tail many carbon-carbon double bonds in our oils. They are typically liquid at room temperature and they are typically from plant sources. But again, these are like, these are not exact definitions. For example, a fish oil is definitely not from a plant. So there are going to be examples of, of fats and oils that don't meet these definitions. And I want you to like keep that in the back of your mind that this is just sort of a generalization and there are definitely gonna be exceptions to those definitions.